Okay, where I left off, I was compositing my different um, middle ground layers, and then I had this rock that I was thinking could work for the foreground, but I'm realizing I actually need a bigger rock there because I want it to overlap with the pond behind. And so if I use this rock, I just, I'll have to move it a little bit differently. So I'm going to turn that layer off for now and maybe use it in the reflecting pool, you know, further back. And instead I'm gonna go back to my references. I remember I got more than I needed, but I think I'm gonna use, let's see. going to use this one. Because this is a larger reference and it's got that big pile of rocks that I can kind of cut some out from that work as a good foreground element. That will overlap nicely. But the lighting is in the wrong direction, so I'm going to flip it. and use it as a little outcropping here. Yeah, that will work. Okay, and now I'm gonna rough cut around it. The nice thing about foreground elements is you don't really need to show the land that they're on because they get cropped off the bottom. Then I duplicate, and then I erase from that edge. Come on. And now I just need to get rid of this blue sky around the rock. And luckily those are pretty different types of pixels. So I'm gonna use my magic wand. I'm gonna turn off the feather, because I remembered it from my last setting. Keep it at a tolerance of 32. Make sure I'm on the right layer. Hold down shift to select. Hold down shift to keep adding to the selection to get all that blue. And you see how it's peeking through these little cacti here? So I'm gonna hit delete, get rid of those pixels first. It gives me this little rough edge. And this is why these are just rough cutouts. If I wanted to try to get all the blue in the image, I could try turning off contiguous. And then it will get, you know, all these little bumps but the problem is it also selects little blues that are in the rock. So instead of just hitting delete, which would delete all of them at once, what I can do, which can be pretty effective, is to use my eraser tool and set my eraser at 100% opacity, smaller and harder. And then when I erase out, I can pick you know, what blues I erase. So just those, not the ones in the landscape. So I'm using, basically I'm using the, the magic wand to create a stencil. And now I'm using the eraser like a brush to selectively take away from that stencil. Okay. Let's look at my sketch. I just wanted another kind of foreground element here. I have that listed as 
number two of my references. No, I have it listed as number three of my references, I believe. Oh, I don't have it listed at all, but it is number three. And I want the one that matches the lighting, so that's this one, with the lighting coming from the, the left. Huge reference. Accidentally hit Command-T instead of Control-T, which opens up a new tab on a Mac. So Control-T will allow me to free transform it. And this is where your reference can kind of dictate what you do a little bit. So I like the shadow and I like the terrain and I even like the formation behind it and it looks very alien. So I'm just going to go ahead and rough cut out more than I need. Command J, delete the smart layer. And I'm going to set that layer behind what I just cut out. And now I'm going to cut away from it using the magic wand with contiguous turned on. Interesting. Hold down shift, add more of that blue sky. Hit delete. Just going to leave a little trace of it, which will be a nuisance, but I'll be able to take care of that. Deselect. And yeah, I kind of kind of like what it looks like big. Definitely gives you more of a focal point in this landscape. And then I might even go back and unlock this hill layer. And when I'm feeling cautious, I'll make a duplicate and turn off what it duplicates and play around with shifting the eye line of this. Tilting it a little bit, even warping it. How can I get the most out of this hillside? And then I can compare the two. Do I like it up there or do I like it down here? Come on. Yeah, I think I like it a little further down. And then that shows me other things I need to delete, like this. And I can just go in with my lasso and just do a rough cut we're not fine-tuning our edges yet we're just placing things and you can see that some of my edges are pretty rough some have a little halo some things are sharper some things are softer the coloring's all different but i have i think everything placed now in a way that's interesting. I'm wondering if I move this down a little bit still. Maybe shrink it a tiny bit.
that can work better for the composition. Or I actually have a better idea. I'm going to keep it big and bold. But I'm going to do some internal compositing here. And to be cautious, I'll make a copy just in case this doesn't work out. Internal compositing is when you composite with the elements you already have. So I work within the same layer. And I'm going to take this big rock that's on top, and I'm going to hit Command X, which is different than Command J. What Command X does is it looks like it deletes it, but it copies it onto the clipboard. And so then when I hit Command V to paste it, it puts it onto a new layer all on its own. And that allows me just to, to play with the size, angle, and orientation of this stone. Like maybe I want to flip it vertically, swing it all the way around. have it kind of sitting on top. Maybe I want to distort it a little bit. Narrow it at the tip. And then maybe I want to move that behind that edge. All right, and maybe move it down a little. Internal compositing. Then I can use my lasso to kind of cut away from its sides in a way that I think is interesting. Then I can merge those layers back together by holding down Shift and going to Layer, Merge Layers. So now it's one piece again. Or if I decide, oh, I don't want to do that, I can go back to my history before I merged it. And I can do some little, this is all about tangencies. I don't like how those line up. So I'm just going to push this element, that stone, On the that part of the layer. I'm just going to um, hit Command X, hit Command V to make a new layer with it. And then just squash it down a little bit. Erase that little bit of highlight. Come on. Yeah, so we're learning a lot about lassos and layering and organizing it. Get rid of this little pesky highlight. and then cut away from the stone a little bit more. All right, so now, all from one layer, layer six, I have four different layers making it up now. And when I'm happy with them, I can merge them.